Good day everyone. We are Team A and we are the challengers for the case study of Phil and Vest Land Incorporated. First off, I would like to introduce the members of Team A. They are Yoneth Achazo, Rosel Alberca, Jessica Capito, Alfredo Lantaco Jr., Kim Montejo, and yours truly, Demsal Contapay. So let's move on to the company's background. Phil Invest Land Incorporated is one of the oldest and largest real estate development corporations in the Philippines. It is a subsidiary of Phil Invest Development Corporation. They first concentrated on lower to middle income communities around the nation. And they currently have developed more than 2,400 hectares of property and they have built homes for over 150,000 families. More recently, they started targeting middle to high income earners. Next is the case summary. Throughout the year, FLI has been well positioned in the market. They have a growth potential given its sizable land bank and its focus on residential affordability. But despite all this, they are still struggling to be the number one real estate developer in the country, which is the management's goal. For this case, we looked into their internal strengths and weaknesses, as well as their external opportunities and threats, in order to develop a strategy fitting for the company and increase their overall ranking in the market. I will be presenting the internal factor evaluation matrix of Finvis Land Incorporated. In the presentation, you can see a list of the internal strengths and weaknesses of the company. The major strengths of the company are the following. Diversified product and service offerings. Philinvis Land Incorporated offers residential housing that is categorized into four housing projects, which are socialized housing, affordable housing, middle income housing, and high end housing. They also offer mixed use developments where entrepreneurial communities, townships, and leisure projects were built. Philinvis Land Incorporated also offers condominium developments such as medium and high rise buildings, condo hotels, and other commercial developments. They also offer these products and services to different customer segments. Philinvest Land Incorporated clearly identified their focus, which they based it on the income of the markets. They also utilize performance measurements for every department and have good connections with foreign institutions as their major strengths. With a total weighted score of 2.16, which is below the average, it means that Philinvest Land Incorporated is internally weak due to the following reasons lack of market specialization, and effectiveness of marketing strategies and branding. Philinvest Land Incorporated offers diversified products and services. However, customers often find it difficult to identify what market segments the company's different projects are catering to. Next, efficiency of operations. Philinvest Land Incorporated takes a long time to handle customer complaints, address the engineering requirements of the different clusters, resolve legal disputes, and provide the required manpower for various functions. Then, let's proceed to the external factor evaluation matrix. It can be seen in the presentation the list of external opportunities and threats of filling this land incorporated. With a total weighted score of 2.94, which is above average, it means that the company is doing well by responding to existing opportunities and threats in the industry. These are the major opportunities that can help fill and this land be successful. Increasing demand for commercial or office spaces and greater demand for retail space. The demand for BPO enterprises offices increased in the country and the increased entrance of foreign brands also resulted in the increased take up of retail space. Next, unmet demand for mass housing. The backlog for mass housing is still high in the country and the demand for residential housing remains strong as buyers are offered lower payment plans with few down payment requirements. And these are the following major threats of Philinvest Land Incorporated. First, real estate competitors. The strong presence of competitors like Ayala Land, SM Prime Holdings, Mega World Corporation and Robinson's Land Corporation puts the industry in a tight competition. And lastly, the diminishing land stock in the major cities. After presenting the IFT and EFT matrices, we now present the third matrix under the input stage, which is the competitive profile matrix. For this matrix, we compared the top performers under the real estate development industry, which are the Phil Invest Land, Ayala Land, 
SM Prime, Mega World, and Robinson's Land. To compare them fairly, we listed 10 critical success factors needed within the industry, namely market strategy, brand reputation, strong online presence, management or customer service, product or service differentiation, market segmentation, overall net income, trading revenues, company revenues, and equity. Based on our analysis, Ayala Land Incorporation has the highest score of 3.74, followed by Aston Prime with 2.81, then Megaworld with 2.6, Robinsons with 2.06, and Phil Invest Land with 1.57. The matrix showed that Phil Investland is far behind these four corporations when it comes to the listed success factors. Phil Invest needs to improve most of their strategies for each factors, aside from their market segmentation, which they need to protect. They already have a great market segmentation with a rating of 4. However, all other factors has a rating of 1 or 2, which means they are either major or minor weaknesses. So they should focus more on these and further develop their strategies within these areas. Stage 2 Matching Stage The matching stage consists of techniques that can be used in any sequence. These tools rely on information derived from the input stage to match external opportunities and threats with internal strengths and weaknesses. The purpose of matching external and internal key factors is to effectively generate feasible alternative strategies rather than selecting or determining which strategies are best. But first, let's look at the list of eight key internal strengths and weaknesses. And on the next pages, four of the key external opportunities and threats. The first matching tool used is the SWOT matrix which is essential to managers because it helps in developing the four types of strategies, namely SO, WO, ST, and WT strategies. Strength opportunities or SO strategies use a firm's internal strengths to take advantage of external opportunities. We all know that all managers would like their organization to be in a position in which internal strengths can be used to take advantage of external trends and events. On Phil Invest case, one possible SO strategy is the expansion of business through the subsidiaries to meet the demand for commercial or office spaces, luxury residential market, mass housing, and retail space, which were formulated from the existing key internal strengths and key external opportunities. Now, with weakness opportunities or WO strategies, aim at improving internal weaknesses by taking advantage of external opportunities. And one example of much key external and internal factor to formulate WO strategy is developing marketing strategy by market specialization to meet the unmet demand for mass housing. Now, with strength threats or ST strategies, use a firm's strengths to avoid or reduce the impact of external threats. And with fill invest organization, the formulated ST strategy is maximizing the diminishing land stock through mixed-use development and inspection of other available geographic locations. Lastly, for weakness threats or WP strategies, explained as a defensive tactics directed at reducing internal weakness and avoiding external threats. On the case of Phil Invest organization, the formulated WP strategies is by using better pricing decisions incorporate other effective marketing strategies to reach a wider scope of intended audience and closely monitor and improve operations. Still on stage two, the matching stage, we made use of strategic position and action evaluation matrix. With the aim of determining the overall strategic position of the company prior to identifying the best type of strategy to pursue, 
We rated every factor in each dimension depending on its rating system, with 7 and negative 1 as the best, and 1 and negative 7 as the worst. Such factors were deduced from the previous matrices as validation for prioritization. To simplify this matrix, the best factors, liquidity, and profit potential reflects how the company still has room for growth. The worst factors, on the other hand, which are marketing strategies and competitive pressure, reflect how FLI needs to incorporate more effective strategies. These can be considered as representatives for each dimension. Basically, the values assigned to each factor are essential in identifying the current standing of the company. We derived the final point on the x-axis, which is negative 0.25, and the total y-axis score of 1.25 from the ratings given to every dimension on the space matrix. This leads us to the type of strategy FLI should pursue, which is the conservative position. Here, the industry is potentially stable, but the growth rate is low. FLI needs to improve its current competitive position by developing competitive advantages or focusing on the more attractive niches of the overall market. It is imperative that the company safeguards and strengthens its existing offerings, in this case, boosting brand marketing strategy. FLI can also venture in new product offerings, particularly new projects for mass housing. Now, we move on to the third and final stage, the stage decision which consists of the quantitative strategic planning matrix. The contents of this matrix are derived from the previous stages, which we will now process to arrive at the best strategic alternative. Since the space matrix resulted in the conservative quadrant, the strategies selected from the SWOT matrix are those aligned with the strengthening of the competitive position of the company. The first strategy generated is the development of marketing strategy by market specialization to meet the unmet demand for mass housing. The second one is the boosting of their present brand marketing strategy to meet the great demand of commercial, office, and retail spaces. Now, let's take a look at the matrix. First, with the opportunities. The environment where Phil Investland operates in presents stable growth and several demands, including the demands for commercial and office spaces, luxury residences, mass housing, retail spaces, and hotel rooms. Looking at the matrix, the second strategic alternative offers more chances in exploiting the mentioned demands than the first one. The other opportunities reflecting the growth of the real estate industry have more or less favored both strategies equally. Proceeding on the threats, both strategies have equal potential in avoiding the threats coming from the real estate competitors. On the strengths, the second strategy allows the company to capitalize more on its diversified product or service offerings along with their existing customer segmentation, the location of the projects, and their modern and mixed-use development projects. Next, we have the weaknesses where the first strategy clearly excel in overcoming the lack of market specialization. With the assigned values, the sum total attractiveness score of both strategies, as you can see, are calculated. The score of second strategy is higher than the first one, which means that the second alternative offers the strategy that would holistically be better in capitalizing on their strengths and exploiting the opportunities while overcoming the weaknesses and avoiding threats. For the company to gain competitive advantage, the company should proceed with the boosting of their present brand marketing strategy to meet the great demand of commercial, office, and retail spaces based on the quantitative strategic planning matrix. Phil Investland Incorporated can realize this by maximizing their organic social media presence and installing their advertisements on premium locations. It would be very much effective for the company to develop a voice for the brand, which in this case is about the entrepreneurship and the economy. And last but not the least, focus on projects that would cater the demands for commercial office and retail spaces in order to make the most of the opportunities present. That is all for our presentation. Thank you and best wishes.